My name is Ricky. You can follow me on Instagram across all social media at Ricky Boada. This is my personal 1974 Ford Bronco. Now, I want to show you guys all about it, give you a little history on the Bronco. This one in particular is a wagon. They came in wagon, they came in half cab, which is the one that up to here, and then Roadster, which no roll cage, and pretty much just, honestly, most of them had the half door like this. Now, those only came out for two years because sales were weak. These are the ones that came out all the way from 1966 to 77. They got introduced in August of 65. They got introduced with a six cylinder from the Falcon. Then pretty much the six cylinder, no one wanted it. They were, to, they were competing against the CJ5, the International Harvester. Later on, the K5 Blazer came out. I mean, imagine, these were a lot bigger. People wanted more power. But when the Broncos were made, Ford was on a low budget. So these door cards are actually the exact same symmetrical on both sides, which is crazy. You wouldn't even think, but that's how it is. All right, this part's pretty funny. You guys are gonna love it. Check out these seats. These seats look exactly like the originals, right? Except without these bolsters here on the side. What do you think these are from? If you can, leave a comment under right now. All right, I'll tell you. These are from a 1992-93 Civic EX. These are the ones that have the one-sided headrest. You take out the headrest, you wrap it in your leather, and they look original, except they're comfortable now. I take this Bronco down on trips to the Keys. I take it, you know, I drive it a lot, honestly. That's why it's probably not even that clean. Great trick if anybody's looking to do that. They work amazing. If you come this way, these Broncos, it was an option. You can have two different gas tanks. One of them is a 12 and a half gallon. The other one is a seven and a half gallon. And I mean, it's pretty cool. You switch them here for the gauge. So that's for the, one of the gas tanks. Actually, this is for the main gas tank. This is for the auxiliary gas tank and it will change on the actual gauge. And if you do this, it doesn't switch it. You actually have to come here. And if you see down here, it has, you switch that over to one side. That's the main one. And if you go here, that's for the auxiliary. Now this Bronco does have, you know, a bunch of extra accessories. It does have a three and a half inch lift, mag wheels, the curry axles. This actual bumper is pretty popular. You can find it in almost all the Bronco stores. So like Thomas Bronco, early Broncos, a bunch of the online stores. I like it because it can hold this. You know, you have your spare tire carrier, which real big suggestion. If you go bigger than stock size, this one shakes, but you don't feel it on the Bronco. If you come on this way, you'll see here that these were the previous holes where the tire carrier was. Big thing, big, big, big thing. On the early, early years of the Ford Broncos, the side markers weren't here. Some of them were lower, but this is a 74. It brings them already here. First year of the Bronco, 66, there was no side markers at all. So that's a pretty easy way to know. Let me show you guys under the hood. There's some goodies under here. And check this out. All right, so this is a 302. Like I said, they came out six cylinder, 289, and 302, which is this one. This one in particular has a bunch of little extra goodies. The MSD distributor, which makes night and day difference for you know pretty much reliability and driving and the way that it runs. This one has, believe it or not, 289 heads. So the reason they do that, they put the 289 heads and the 289 intake manifold for more compression. This one has a RV cam, which is for low end torque. Has the ARB compressor up here with the nozzle, which is pretty cool because with this, I mean, you're out off-roading, you can, you know, either use power tools or, example, you lower your tire pressure, you go off-roading, right? You come back onto the road, you're not gonna be at 15 PSI, whatever it is you were running out there, either in the mud or the rocks, whatever. You plug up the hose, fill up to whatever you were at, and there you go. So that's great. This one in particular has a bunch of other things up here. So it has the tow bar, this, believe it or not, even on the stock Broncos, you can, it was a factory option. So you can get a tow bar from the factory later in the years when they started putting a little bit more work into the Broncos. In the beginning of the years, as plain as they could be. Another big thing, this Bronco's a 74. So they didn't start coming out with power brakes till 76. This one in particular has a James Duff power brake conversion. So I do have disc brakes in the front, do have the power booster. Another cool thing, 
This one has a C4, but I do have the transmission cooler down under there, which I'll show you guys now. This one now has the Edelbrock 1406 carburetor, which is a 650. It runs pretty good, electric choke. So moving on under the car, right? There's a bunch of things, look. If you look down here, there's the rear yoke protector, which is crazy. That's probably not needed unless you're gonna go into real heavy off-roading. This one in particular has 355 gears with Detroit lockers in the back and ARB air compressed lockers in the front. Now, let's move on to the interior. So check this out. This one in particular, right, has this, which I think is pretty cool. This is where you can see all the linkages for the 4x4. So if you're out on the trails and one of the linkages decides to fail, you can just take this little piece apart, you see what's wrong in there, you take it apart and you fix it right there on the spot. Another cool thing, I'll show you guys how the ARB lockers work. They're right here. Here I have the ARB compressor, you turn this on. And another cool thing, it has a blow off valve, so it sounds pretty cool. Oh wait. There it was. Here we have the radiator fan, transmission cooler fan. It has a heater, CB radio, which CB radio was another option that you can get standard from the Bronco. This Bronco in particular has something really cool and I'm not sure if all of these have this, but if you look here, when they have this front roll cage, you can't open this, right? So you go here, slide it across, and now you can, oh. Sorry, that was my reggaeton. I'm gonna show you guys how it drives. I want you guys to hear it, see how cool this thing is. And honestly, we're gonna talk a little bit about why it's worth so much money. All these cars that pretty much were cool back in the day, right? And they made a low production number of them. They've all skyrocketed in value. This thing, I personally have a, a CJ5, like you guys may know. And I love driving this because it's, it's so different celebrities have gotten them lately. So they've all been hyping them up where these things, this one's probably worth about 35 grand. They go all the way up to 120, 140, 150 if they have the Coyote motor. So let's go. These cars, they're not the most comfortable, but I put these Civic seats in there, which look original, so they are comfortable. But man, look, you're, you're riding in this, everyone waves at you, everyone goes, oh, I love your Bronco. And then when they say, I love your Jeep, you go, real quick. Nah, but all right, look, you ready? You ready, ready? Down check. Oh, whoops, that lady was outside. Every time you drive this thing, you have a smile. So no matter what, you could be grumpy, fight with your girl, fight with your guy, whatever, I don't know. You're gonna have a smile on your face. This one in particular, I need to, you know, adjust the steering. This is a big problem that they have. All of them have some play, so you're driving down the highway and you're like, ah. I wish it was a little wet. With the Detroit locker in the back, this thing rips some crazy close donuts. Also, you wanna drive this chilling, right? So you wanna drive it, you wanna relax a little bit, but at the same time, it does have the 302, doesn't put a lot of power. This one is worked up, so. Everyone's waving at you, go like this, it's fucking awesome. I wanna tell you guys, buy these now before they keep climbing up in price. I mean, Bloomberg wrote an article about them. They're gonna be worth over 100K. I mean, they're, they're getting harder and harder to find. They're getting more and more rust. They're becoming cooler and cooler. So if you can, buy one ASAP. Anything else you wanna know about my Bronco or anything else you wanna know about the rat rod too, let me know. We out here, we out here. Peace.